the heartbeat of competition, the drama of the moment. This is TNT Sports, home of NASCAR's race for the championship. Give it fuel, give it fire, give it double shot it loud! TNT Sports presents NASCAR. Tonight, it's NASCAR Busch Series Racing from Indianapolis. Just across town from the Brickyard sits Indianapolis Raceway Park, a smaller six-tenths of a mile cousin of the famed track. Though lacking the glory of the bigger speedway, IRP gives nothing away where action is concerned. The fender mash and temper for the race in this track's become known for fills the grandstands. Drivers, well, they get filled with excitement, too. Weather does threaten us here tonight, so we're going to get things going right now. From the Kroger Company, drivers, start your engine. Welcome to NASCAR on TNT. Alan Bestwick, Benny Parsons, and our guest for the night, Elliot Sadler, driver of the M&M Sport. He said he was coming over to watch the race anyway. I thought I'd put him to work. How you doing? Great. Doing great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate your being here. Yep. Benny, I want to start with you. Let's talk about this championship. The lead in the NASCAR Busch Series title race has changed hands three times in the last five weeks and could well again tonight. And Scott Riggs has a lead, but just barely. Just two points between himself and David Green. And this racetrack they're racing on tonight, it's a very tough racetrack to finish. We see a lot of casualties here. And in two weeks, they go to, uh, three weeks, they go to Bristol. So they've got to get through this one, get through Bristol with any hope of winning a championship. And Elliot, you finished second the last two times you raced here, but this is a tough racetrack. It is, and I think the progressive banking adds to that. Uh, the guy on the bottom, it's, it's a lot looser down there. you got to use your chrome horn a lot to try to move up in positions. Track position is a big, big key here and Bristol coming up. So I know all the guys in the points race want that track position. Scott Riggs starting 19th tonight, so I know he'll have his fingers crossed, try to get to the front, keep the mess behind him, and try to get all the championship points he can. You said iron horn during rehearsal. You got upgraded to chrome now? You helped me out, Alan. <laughs> Great teacher. <laughs> okay, appreciate it. Of course, the big headline the last couple of weeks in the NASCAR Bush Series has been the on-track feud between two of the circuit's top drivers, Bobby Hamilton Jr. and Mike Bliss. With more on that, we head to Pit Road and Ralph Shaheen. A couple of weeks ago, they got together for the first time in New Hampshire International Speedway. When they got done crashing, Mike Bliss said to Bobby Hamilton, he's got a 10-foot ego and a 4-foot body. They went on to Pikes Peak. And Mike Bliss got into the backside of Bobby Hamilton when they got done crashing there. NASCAR said, boys, that's it. We don't want to see you in this trailer ever again. I asked Mike Bliss just moments ago, is it done? He said, I'll race Bobby Hamilton however he races me. But more on this story, here's my colleague, Mark Garrow. Well, Ralph, I think you could call it at best an uneasy truth between those two drivers. When NASCAR asked them, is it over, they really didn't get an answer. So I went to Bobby Hamilton today. Is it over? He goes, it is for now. Alan? All right, so what will tonight's headline be? A continuing driver feud or a new championship leader? We'll find out when the green flag waves next at Indianapolis Raceway Park. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. In hurry-up mode tonight here at IRP, here's your look at the starting lineup. Shane Meal has taken advantage of a provision in the rule book. Even though he's on the pole, he's starting on the outside front row for the green in this one. Now back in... Mike Bliss back in row nine and look back in row 10 on the inside. The NASCAR Bush Series points leader, Scott Riggs. And the rest of the starting field for tonight's race from Indianapolis Raceway Park, 43 strong, set to go 200 laps on this six tenths of a mile track. And we'll see how many, let's see, we got 43 cars, four fenders apiece. We'll see how many of them are intact by the time we get done. It'll be a lot less, I guarantee you. I'm not doing the math on that. I'll just let you, <laughs> let you add that up at home. Thank you very much. Great crowd on hand tonight, as always, here at IRP, and they're all standing up right now as the field comes off turn four for the green flag, and the Kroger 200 is underway. in the 800 Ditech car. Uh, just ahead of 
Jason Keller. Shane Mill really took advantage of that outside line, got a great start, and uh, kind of moving away a little bit. Shane Mill, the leader, David Green second, Brian Vickers third, fourth is Kyle Busch, Kevin Grubb pressuring him there for fifth. Looking back, here's Bobby Hamilton Jr. in the 25, and Mike Skinner in the seventh for eight to nine. And this is Tim Fiedewa on board the Super Cuts car. 12 machine running back in 17. And Skinner in that seven car on the inside trying to go forward, but Elliot's a tough plowing down there. It is, it's just so flat in there on the bottom. You gotta root around a little bit. Mike Skinner's a veteran. He'll definitely be able to do that. He's moving up. He has uh, passed a few cars and uh, make his way to the front. Mike Skinner's first NASCAR Bush Series race since September 22nd, 2001. Didn't have any ride a couple of weeks ago. This weekend, he's running three times. <laughs> right, ran the Crashman truck here last night. The Bush Series race tonight. He's in the Brickyard 400 tomorrow. That's Martin Truex. Martin Truex Jr. in the 58 car. Joey Clanton in the 27 trim spot. Trying to get by and is about to lose a spot on the inside. It's Casey Kane behind him trying to get by. Back to Hamilton Jr. It's tough. You just got to set the guys up so like a corner before here. You really got to get a good run at them going down the back stretch, the front stretch. Try to roll up under them in the middle of the corner and pray for that forward bite. I think you're going to hear a lot about forward bite tonight as these guys get their tires nice and hot as long as we run on up under green flag conditions. Ron Hornaday in the two try to move up. Qualified back in 16th position. And Hamilton Jr. being persistent, trying to get by David Stremme in the one. How about fifth place? Jason Keller putting some pressure on Kevin Grubb. He's on the inside, but you just can't get the grip down there that you can on the outside. You run out of banking. You run out of banking. You see how it's flat under the white dotted line right there when he tries to go across. It loosens the car up too much. Kevin Grubb gets a good run off the corner. You got to settle back in behind him, and uh, you got to try him again here in a few laps. Nice job by Kevin Grubb qualifying. Fifth place for that team. Great job for Kevin, those guys. They, they need a good run. They've had some bad luck here lately, so uh, hopefully they'll have a good time tonight. Fellow Virginian. Fellow Virginian. Raced against him in late model sun and had a great time doing it, so hopefully I'm kind of pulling for him. All the Virginia guys. He's doing a good job to hang on to that spot over Jason Keller, who obviously has a little bit faster car right now. Check a little farther back. David Stremme in the one. Home state Indiana guy. like Jason Keller is going to finally get by Kevin Grubb in the 26th now. Took him a few laps. He finally burned his tires up too bad, though, and uh, got a nice clean track ahead of him, and I, I bet you we'll see him pull away here. So Jason Keller up to fifth place, and Kevin Grubb back to sixth. Keller got a little bit of ground to make up to catch uh, fourth place Kyle Busch. He's about a second and a half behind him. So Shane Neal got the jump on the start, has led all of the nine laps we've completed so far. David Green trying to close in and put on a little bit of pressure for the number one spot. At Indianapolis Raceway Park, Shane Neal in the 48 leads just underway here. 16 laps complete, but David Green is putting an awful lot of pressure on him. He's putting lots of pressure on him, and Shane Mills trying to figure out which line to take to pass these lap cars, and a couple of times it looks like he has chosen the wrong one, but David Green has tried, but not able to pass him so far. Yeah, David's doing a good job just falling through the traffic, letting Shane make the holes, use his tires up, David falling through, save a little rubber in case he tries to make a clear-up track pass in a little bit. Elliot Sadler joining BP and I for tonight's race. Elliot going to start the Brickyard 400 in 16th position tomorrow. We'll talk to you about that a little bit later on. Meantime, got a good race going here for the lead and in some heavy, heavy lap traffic. I'll tell you, Brian Vickers is uh, closing in on the leaders also. We're going to have a three-way battle here in a minute, and uh, I think it's whoever chooses the right lines through the lap cars. Uh, it's going to make a big difference. It's 49 car. Tammy Joe Kirk, they're going by. Oh, we got a big crash over turn three. Double turn three. Stacy Compton, Martin Truex, and Joey Clanton. And the caution's out for the first time. Well, you knew it was just a matter of time. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised it went this long, actually. <laughs> Those guys are racing hard, too. Yeah. All right, let's check it out. Joey Clanton, who got his first top five Bush Series finish of his rookie season a week ago. And you can tell, Noy, folks, that uh, Noy is not good. Oh, my goodness. You got it both ends. 
All right, what happened? That's him trying to get under the 58 car. Just got in the corner a little bit too hard. Make contact, and both cars back around the fence. And Stacy Compton had no place to go except in the wreck. That, that happens a lot here, though, Benny. When you get in on that apron going into turn three, you see his left side tires go under this white line uh, going in here. And he goes in a little hard, tries to slide into him, and uh, the back end comes around on him, hitting, and uh, that's it. What does the trader likes to say? He took the air off his spoiler and then he hit him. <laughs> All right, and so Stacy Compton just kind of swept up in the aftermath. You see the damage there to the Martin Truex car, and Joey Clanton has brought his heavily wounded machine onto pit road. None of the leaders have pitted here, so we'll take a break. Under caution for the first time at Indianapolis Raceway Park. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. NASCAR Bush Series Racing from Indianapolis Raceway Park is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the proud sponsor of the NASCAR Bush Series. By Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. Mobile One, the official motor oil of NASCAR. And Sears Craftsman. Craftsman has the right tool for every project. Craftsman at Sears. We saw this sign during the commercial breaks. Folks, folks check this out. It says USAC ticket, $25. Uh, so NASCAR Bush over, Series. Over 200 ticket, yeah. $52. Seeing Tony Stewart win the Brickyard 400. Priceless. Way to go. Way to go, son. Under caution still as they clean things up. Three-car accident involving Joey Clanton, among others, Ralph. Well, his trim spot number 27 is tore up pretty bad, as you can see. Joey, what happened? Well, I mean, you know, trying to make laps out there. And Martin Truist in front of me just got into the wall the lap before. And I, don't, I mean, it's my fault. I mean, he, he checked up early. I guess he probably had something going wrong. And I just, I got in under him. And we were running off all them lap cars real quick. And I just got into him and tried to stay off of him and turn mine around to, to save it. So it's all my fault. Just, Trying to make laps here, and I mean, lap cars just take away so much racetrack. It's just, it's unbelievable. Joey Clanton's hoping they get his car fixed, get him back out there, let him get some laps, and hopefully get some points. To Mark Garrow. Ralph, that was a close call for Scott Riggs. He was behind those two cars. He slammed on the brakes to miss the wreck. And always when you do that, there's a danger somebody will hit you from behind. Luckily, they didn't. However, they had to check the car for flat spotting, maybe a tire, a fender rub. They found it to be okay, so he stayed out. And right now, guys, a little tight in the middle of the corner. He's not able to get on the gas as quickly as he'd like to. What happened to Hamilton Jr.? Bobby Hamilton is just blown up on the caution flag. Wow, oh, that's a lot of smoke. That does not look good at all. They were coming to the green flag, and suddenly the smoke from Hamilton Jr.'s car, they waved off the restart. It looks like the car is still running, Hamilton's car, so maybe an oil line has broken on the car. Weird. Be an oil line or something. Y'all get in here and get the hood up. See what Harold we got. Holly, their crew chief, telling him to get it on in pit road. Check this out. Do the pit. Wow, just all of a sudden. And I don't I think it is an old line. I think Benny hit it right on it. It's gotta be. He just had run through the accident site there, so I wonder if he kicked up something that got missed and cut cut that line. And Mark Garrell just a moment ago talked about Scott Riggs barely missing that crash. He picked up three spots in that crash. He was running 19th, he's now running 16th, but he barely, barely avoided that. Harold Holly, Bobby Hamlet Jr.'s crew chief waiting for his car. Go back to this crash just a moment ago. All the cars crashing. Now, Scott Wimmer's going to go through, and right behind him is the 10 car of Scott Riggs. That's what we are talking about at the beginning of the show, Benny. Yeah. Uh, these points guys looking for that break. He wants to get up in front so he don't have to worry about these types of wrecks in front of him. He wants to keep that stuff behind him. A lucky break for the team car. Hopefully he can take advantage of it. Ralph, what do you see in that 25? Well, Alan, they've got the hood up on it right now. The crew is working underneath it, checking a look at it. They do believe it is an oil line. They do believe it has fallen off. Now, it looks like they're going to try to maybe, now they still got the engine done. Now the engine has shut off. They're going to have to get in there, get it fixed, and the NASCAR officials are here watching to make sure everything is taken care of properly before they'll release this car back out onto the racetrack. All right, and they had to bring some uh, oil dry out in large quantities and dust down the Indianapolis Raceway Park Oval, so the yellow continues. And we take advantage of the extended caution to squeeze in another break. You're watching NASCAR on TNT.